Given that June has been a bad month on average for stocks in the past decade, is today the start of another big monthly swoon on Wall Street? In today's Closing Bell Exchange, we have David Darst from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, Tom Bellasis from John Thomas Financial, and our own Ron Insana and Mary Thompson. So, David Darst, I'll begin with you. You're sitting right here. What do you make of what we're seeing today, and how do you now set yourself up for next week? Europe is a mess. China PMIs were a disaster. Our own jobs report was exceptionally weak. Bad news flow. We said in the first quarter, Scott, as you recall, when the market was up 12% and everybody was off to the races, take it easy, drive slowly, be cautious. We remain cautious, defensive. Little extra cash, little extra two-year bonds, have some uh, tips in there, have some real estate investment trust, diversify. Go for a yield, okay? Buy these Coca-Colas, buy these Pepsis, buy these Global Gorillas, and use this as an opportunity to buy some growth. What I'm talking about there is Microsoft. Microsoft, Oracle, Apple. Buy some of that growth that, so, that sold off here. Yeah, for, for 147 on the Treasury, excuse me, Maria, to be a, a buy rather than 2.2% yield, three things have to happen. A bad Greek breakup, okay? No policy action. 80% chance now the Fed will do something on June 19th, June 20th. You think? And, and thirdly, profits collapse. And we don't see those. So we, you have to watch those three things. Yeah. The Fed, June 20th. Uh, the profits and uh, the Greek the Greek breakup is in a bad one. And I'm well, sorry. The Greek elections, June 17th. Tom, do you really want to buy now, given the fact that this tape feels terrible? I mean, if we, you know, decelerate even further, I mean, the last three months uh, in terms of employment gains, you're seeing a downward revision. So it, it's correct. clear that when you look at the macro picture, things have gotten yeah, worse. Absolutely, Marie. I mean, David brings up a lot of great points, but if you look past all this, I mean, this could set up a huge opportunity come fall before the election because everyone now is focusing on the numbers, the economic numbers, on what's happening now with this current administration. I mean, let's look over the past 60 years. We've had 11 recoveries, 11 recessions. And we're 34 months into this recovery, and we've had the ninth worst recovery for job growth. GDP growth is the worst out of all recoveries. So ultimately, if you look beyond this, this could be a huge uh, level for people to buy stocks at some point in time. At We're, some point, but does it get worse before it gets better? I mean, should I wait around here for better prices? Is my question. Uh, you, you know what? You don't want to. You don't want to step in now. You want to wait and see right. what happens. So you know, you definitely want to have some powder dry. That way, if that does bottom out, you can step in and get some great companies at these levels. Ron and Sana, people have uh, looked to you often <laughs> for uh, voices of comfort. The individual however investor, the sage, however the mistaken sage. they might have been. Well, look, the, the individual investor has Sana. right. They've looked at you uh, for comfort in times like this when there's storm clouds on the horizon and now it's pouring pretty hard on the markets. What should people be doing today? Well, I, I think not much. I mean, I, 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 here's a point where, you know, this morning I got up and there was a very nervous feeling in my stomach, which is more often associated with bottoms than with the middle of a sell-off because even I'm feeling like I should capitulate here. Um, I think the Fed, I agree with David, is going to do something, whether they extend what's called Operation Twist by buying long-dated treasuries, whether they announce another round of quantitative easing buying more treasury or mortgage bonds. I think that's in the offing. I know I spoke with Steve Leisman off camera a little while ago. He doesn't think it's that soon. I think another 5% down in the stock market triggers that. And there's a chart I want to show, guys, that I think is quite interesting. I mean, last year, when we were in the midst of that sell-off and, and in the depths of September and October, the 10-year note yield went down to 1.7%, and the S&P was at 1,100. Now we're at 1.47%, and the S&P is above 1,200. I do think this low, record low yield on the 10-year note is going to send a message to the Fed to do more in the absence of any other kind of stimulus out of Washington. Uh, but I also think it's an interesting divergence that the S&P, while just touching its 200-day moving average with much, much lower rights, might be telling us that the U.S. is still the best game in town. Right. And Mary Thompson, what's the chatter on the floor? You've been talking to traders all day. I'm sure there's some view of what's happening in the Treasury market, given the yeah. plunge in yields. But certainly, people have to be wondering what the weekend has in store and what next week will bring. Well, a number of people next week, of course, will be listening to what um, Ben Bernanke has to say when he testifies. That is a focus of traders because naturally the jobs report raises questions about QE3. The question about that is, yes, it would provide some kind of support for the markets, but just how long? Because again, 
again, a number of tough decisions have to be made both here in the U.S. and Europe, I think, to clear the Thank situation. You. The traders say for businesses to go ahead, to hire, to you know make the investments that they need to do in order to get this economy going again. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. We'll be watching certainly next week another pretty good week in terms of economic uh, data to set the tone. We'll be watching it all. Thanks, everybody. About uh, 50 minutes before the closing bell sounds for the day. For the week, we've had a tough one down 270 on the Dow Industrials right now. That's about at the lows. Yep, and stick around on this big market day because we're all over it. Yeah, picks it up from here. The second hour of the closing bell starts right now. Four o'clock on Wall Street. Do you know where your money is? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the closing bell. I'm Maria Bartiromo on a very rough day on Wall Street today. Uh, here's where we're following up. With this kind of fear in this market, what to do now as an investor? In a moment, I'll be joined by uh, Margie Patel from Wells Fargo Funds Management, along with Riverfront Investment Group's Doug Sandler. Back with me right now is Tom Belisis and our own Rick Santelli. What do you want to tell investors here today, Tom? Given this huge decline that we're seeing, a lot of fear back into this market, lots of worries all over the place. I think ultimately the investors should focus on corporate profits, which have been strong. Now, people are nervous, yes, over Europe and what's going to happen over there. You see China weakening. People are nervous if there's going to be a run of the banks or possibly, you know, bank defaults. But ultimately, if they look past all of this, this is going to create a huge opportunity like it did over a year ago. We've been going down this road with Europe for over, you know, two years now, and it's presented great opportunities for investors. So they should focus on great quality companies with great corporate profits and pick the right time to get involved with these companies. You know, I don't disagree in terms of the corporate profit picture. We're talking about corporate sector looking the best that it's looked in a long Correct. time, $3.6 trillion in cash on balance sheet. Some people are, are saying that's the real number there, but they're not spending it. They're not yes. doing anything with that cash. So what is, you know, if they're not going to put it back and give it to shareholders through dividends, buybacks, and certainly investing and in, in, in hiring jobs, hiring people, when are they going to do that? You know, I think you will see ultimately that stocks are going to present an unbelievable attractive valuation in comparison to bonds, and people will put some of their cash to work. I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or next week, but at some point you will see cash off the sidelines come back into the market. Rick, Rick Santelli, you know, uh, while money has been coming out of equities, it is finding a home in treasuries. You're seeing real money flows in fixed income. What did you see today? You know, I, I, the type of flows that aren't necessarily, you know, good flows, there's a lot of anxiety flows that are in the marketplace. I mean, we're closing at the historic low yield virtually at 145. We equal the lowest close ever at 252 in a 30 year. I really think that the lower I see rates go, the more depressed I get as to the message that Treasury's boons and guilt are sending. And even though our guests may be absolutely right, and I don't disagree that maybe in a couple of years, we're going to see a much higher equity market. It's the path that gets there that makes people mm -hmm. nervous. Because many believe that if you like buying them today, you're really going to like buying them at some point next week or next month when they're potentially lower. Yeah, because a good what's point. going on in Europe is not good. Absolutely. Margie, let me bring you in here. Margie Patel from mm -hmm. Wells Fargo Funds Management. Uh, what are you doing right now in terms of uh, asset allocation? How are you handling this fear? Well, I think it's actually a good time to begin to look to buy. I actually bought a little bit today because I said, well, the market's down a little over 2% today. That's not a bad time to commit a little bit of cash into some growthy areas. But I do think the market's going to go lower because we're really having a global slowdown. And I think we'll see that for another few months. But still a great time to look for spots to add to attractive companies. Were you surprised to see the employment numbers as weak as they were, 69,000 jobs created last month? Do you think this indicates uh, sort of a, a worsening of the economic landscape in the months to come. I was surprised at how poor the numbers were, and it does indicate we are having a slowdown that will last a quarter or two. I was struck by the fact that while our unemployment rate went to 8.2, Germany's unemployment rate is 5.6. So things aren't all terrible in Europe. There's still some signs of strength. And so I think the better economies will still be able to move ahead, and that will yeah. make an attractive backdrop for stocks. Doug Sandler, let me bring you in here. How about you? Same question for you. How have you been investing? How do you avoid... Uh, getting caught in this uh, downdraft? Well, you always own too much equities on a day like today. Um, and I'd say about two months ago, we felt like we never owned enough. 
Um, I think it's important to pull the lens back. I think uh, a couple months ago, I'd say the perfect scenario would have been a pullback, maybe to the 200-day moving average and get wash out all that excessive optimism. We got that. Of course, it's hard to actually do what you thought you were going to do two months ago, and that's where you really have to rely on what what plan you had in place uh, when, your, when your brain was a little bit more sane. So I'd say now's the time to start seasoning some money into the markets. Uh, you know, you should have sort of a dream list of companies you'd love to buy. Ours are GE, a name like American Express down 4% today, just a real good opportunity. Those are the kind of names that you just kind of pick away at, and you're not gonna get them at the bottom. Um, but you hope you're not buying them at, the, at a top and, and things are going to get better. That's, I'm, gl I'm glad you brought up GE. Why, why do you like GE? What's the catalyst for GE to get moving again? I mean, you know, let's see where GE is at right here. Let me pull this up here. GE is at uh, 18 at 54 right now as we're closed. How much higher do you think it goes if you like it so much? Well, I think the number one thing that gets it going is price. The reason GE hasn't worked in the last 10 years has nothing to do that with their businesses. It has everything to do with the fact that it's, that it's now a cheap stock and it wasn't back when, when it was at 60. Uh, it pays a nice dividend, does share buybacks. It's in really every business. It's sort of a proxy on the economy. Um, you know, I think, I think um, you know, uh, the CEO inherited probably a company that was just too far spread apart. Yep. And he's done all the right things. He's done it at the, you know, unfortunately, you had big shoes to fill. Right. But I, I think GE here, it's a name to buy. I think you get, you know, three and a half, four percent dividend, which is uh, really competitive and, in this market. And of course, that's a 49% owner of NBC and, and, and CNBC. <laughs> right. Thanks, everybody. Just got to throw you. the disclosure out Thank there. You. We'll see you soon, everybody. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Thanks so much. Take a look at the other business headlines.